IKEA has launched its own peer-to-peer -peer furniture resale site. According to Yahoo Finance, IKEA is coming for eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and Craigslist. Good Craigslist mention. With a new peer-to-peer -peer marketplace called IKEA Pre-Owned. A lot of creativity in that name, man. The site is currently being tested in Madrid and Oslo, two of my favorite cities, with global rollout slated for later this year. IKEA Pre-Owned allows customers to buy and sell used IKEA furniture directly from each other. And sellers on the IKEA pre-owned platform can choose to receive cash for their sales or IKEA store credit that includes a 15% bonus. And yes. you're actually going to get this week's put you on the spot question from the AM oh, Consumer and Retail Group. And here it is. All what right. do you believe is the biggest problem to be solved in the world of peer-to-peer -peer secondhand furniture shopping today? And thus, what's the most compelling consumer selling point for IKEA pre-owned? that will make consumers use it. I mean, I love I first of all, I love this idea. I think Do it's you? a great uh, it's a great question from AM. And I think that the key benefits here are one, you have access to like if you're looking for new furniture, you want to you know you have an IKEA thing that you need to replace or that you need to add on a new one to or that or you you're accustomed to a, an IKEA price point. Now, as a consumer, I have a lower, even lower entry point to get the quality that I expect from Ikea or the type of furniture that I need. So number one, I think it's convenience, being able to go to one spot and not having to search Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Craigslist, all the things. I can go to one spot. I know where I can get it. If you just um, want Ikea furniture, If right? you just want Ikea yep. furniture. but Otherwise, you know, it's kind of a hamstring, right? It's kind yes. of hamstring. But I think, you know, one of the key things here is I think that we forget sometimes that IKEA is a very affordable way for the majority of the country here in U the U.S. and the world to outfit an, ap an apartment or their first home or any of these pieces. Like it's it's so important that we have this option. And again, an earlier stepping stone into the IKEA market. I'm moving right now. And I, I can tell you, like <laughs> if I could search... Facebook marketplace and see how many times people are searching for Ikea things. I think it would surprise all of us because of the value. The last part is I think that 15% is going to make a huge difference. Chris, you've talked about several times, like the stock up trip and how important it is to be able to go to Ikea to do a full stock up. And now if you have 15% off that you can use across the entire store, I think that's going to be a massive massive driver for people to participate in this program. Don't steal my thunder, Ed. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. I was, was going to bring that up, but, uh, yeah. but Ben, you're closer to Oslo and Madrid than either <laughs> Anne or I are. So what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah. I, I think I'd look at it from two angles. One is the Ikea angle. Um, you know, one of the things that Ikea have said during all the releases around this is that they believe 10% of the entire global secondhand furniture market is Ikea products. Yes. Which is kind of, which is remarkable. Um, mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, consi and considerably higher than, than, than they're new. So there's like, oh, there's a market there. Can we, can we get into it? There is clearly, it fits within their circular and climate positive by 2030 strategy. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, which is which is super important, particularly in certain European markets. So you kind of buy that. It's it's sort of a logical extension of the buyback scheme that they've been working on, but it's it's also the it's the evolution that IKEA would be, you know, and you guys have talked about from a single market out of town destination retailer to a multi format, multi channel retailer. So I I completely get all that. I mean, the AM question is a really interesting one is, is, mm -hmm. is the consumer logic. And I, I think that's a bit harder for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and why I've, so I've been on, I had to look at the Madrid site and, and had, had, had a go. It's that it feels like you're shopping in an Ikea platform, but it is completely separate to the main Ikea site. So you're not getting that synergy of, I'd like to buy a Billy bookcase. Oh, hang on. I can buy this at this price. Or I could also go into that marketplace. So sure. it, it requires shoppers to make specific journeys into the marketplace to do it. It's not it's not integrated. So you haven't got the footfall of eBay or or, or your other set or Facebook marketplace, but you're also not capitalizing on the footfall of the main IKEA site. So I think that's that's going to be a challenge. It needs to get people there on its own. Um, 
they're obviously making it really easy for sellers to say, I've got this Billy bookcase, here's the details. And the and the UX displays photos of new products. It's got all the dimensions. You can use the digital tools that IKEA have developed to have a look at what this product looks like in your house. I actually found that a bit confusing because I didn't yeah. know when I was looking at the new images or when I was looking at the um, the actual photos submitted by the users. So, look, this is all learning. Um, uh, mm -hmm. I think kudos to the IKEA team, digital team, for, for bringing this. I think there's iterations. I think when I when I look at it, they've been very clear that this is a, a, a two-city trial, Madrid and Oslo. Um, they're not taking any money from it yet. But in this trial, they're not taking No, they're not. Yet. You're right. It's, it's a data gather. Um, so look, we'll see come the end of the year if they roll with it and, and, and take it globally. But what what I do here, I mean, one of one of the most popular keynotes that we had in Barcelona when we had our Shop Talk Europe mm -hmm. a couple of months ago was um, Lars Johan Janheimer, who was chairman of IKEA. And he talked about their culture of innovation, their culture of experimentation. Though this feels like that. Great. Culture of innovation. They've been really clear. We're going to learn from it. If it goes beyond these two cities at the end of the year, great. We'd love IKEA to come back and tell us next summer about how he's going. Yeah. But it but it might not. And the current iteration of the customer interface, I don't think is the one that you roll out. Um, but I think we'll I think we'll see. And I think all credit for giving it a go. That's sort of my that's my take. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, and I'm gonna go back to what Anne said before. So Anne, like now that you because you are moving for to let the audience know you're 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 in the process of moving into a new home. Does that make you automatically think you're going to be in an Ikea here in the next month? Without a doubt. It does, I mean, right? 100%. I absolutely do. When I first read AM's question and when I first saw the story, I was a little skeptical for the reasons, you know, we were kind of peppering here, which was, you know, number one, like, okay, if, if I, do I want to just see Ikea furniture if I want to buy new furniture? Or do I want to see the whole universe of furniture on a Craigslist, a Facebook marketplace? But, but then I got thinking about it more. And even though I was initially skeptical, I was kind of like, you know what? I think this could work. And and to Ben's point and, and to yours too, Anne, is like, this is the first stage. Like, you know, it mm -hmm. can get better over time. So the idea is, could it work? Is there a there there? And I think it is for the reasons I always say is that you think about shopping at Ikea when you have the chore of outfitting your house, when you have a major life change that is preceding that. Yeah. And so those same people that are in that mindset to shop for pre-owned pre Ikea, uh, that are in that mindset are in the same mindset to shop for pre-owned Ikea furniture too, all in one place with the Ikea brand behind it. So I think it may be catering to an entirely different crowd than people that want to go into the new, the store and see all the new furniture too. And it might be an, a, an audience that they're just not tapped into at all. And so yes. I think for that reason, I think in the long run, it could steal share from the Facebook marketplaces, from the Craigslist, because I think that is a separate buying trip. But the psychologies of why I want to shop at Ikea could still exist for me as a consumer. But Anne, last word, you seem to be shaking your head. Yeah, no, I think that that's, In a the really affirmative. Key, that's a really key thing, Chris, is that like you're getting them into the Ikea ecosystem. And it's not just about that, that, you know, reused product that you're buying, but it also, I think down the road allows you to like ping them with other ideas. Like you, you've got the reused Billy bookcase. We can still recommend the complimentary products that you could buy inside of Ikea with that used Billy bookcase. Here are the things like, I think it, it just allows them to kind of be again, that earlier entry point. Maybe they don't want to splurge and spend the $200 on the bookcase, but they're willing to spend 90 and then they're using that extra money to buy complimentary products from ikea that may be used that may be new but it all comes down to like making the ux clear and searchable and easy for the consumer